Hello there and welcome to another Rambo review. Today we are looking at Dawn of Fear. And the premise to this is your mom or your stepmom has committed suicide because the death of your father and I think your brother was just too much for her and she finally had it. You go there to the house to do some paperwork with some guy. The guy says to go look around the house while he's getting you know the shit together. You're looking around, you see something spooky, and then boom, you hear a noise, you go, then he's crucified. He is dead. And now your goal is to find your way out, and at the same time, find out what exactly is going on in this creepy mansion. The story itself, I did not give two shits. It was very boring. Uh, I didn't care about the outcome. Nothing really sucked me in. But if you find yourself interested in it, they have little notes you can find within the house that, that some of the residents talk about some of the creepy going-ons and such. I couldn't even get myself into that. So there's something there. If you, if you yourself like the story for me, I couldn't give two shits. The gameplay itself, as you can see by the footage, is very reminiscent of old school Resident Evil with the camera angle and such. Uh, you run around the mansion, some doors are closed. Uh, as you explore, you find more keys to open more doors, to basically open more and more spots of the mansion slowly. The combat itself, uh, I'll talk about in two sections. One is knife, because you have only like two weapons or such for this, this game, but the, you have your knife, which is one of the best knives I've seen in the survival horror game. Like I was able to dispatch all the zombies with it with pretty ease. Like no, no, there was even a spot where a conga lion zombies came out through a door and I just killed them all with the knife. You do have firearms, a pistol and a shotgun, but one of the main problems with this freaking game is the hit detection. As you, I ran to like this situation where there was a monster right in front of me, this big brooding monster, and I shot my shotgun and the bullets just disappeared. It didn't affect the monster and it just ran up to me and killed me and this kept happening over and over and over again. Even with this game that has a automatic lock on like the old um, Resident Evil games, it, the monster, like the bullets didn't hit. Like I, the only reason I got through it is because it finally worked properly and I was able to move on. But I was there for like a good, like almost half hour or so trying to get through this one session because the fucking hit detection for the guns is garbage. The only times you should be using guns are for anything but zombies. And it's, it, you're praying to God that these things hit the fucking monsters. Uh, the hit detection 2 is a little wonky with the knife, but not in a bad way as the guns are. Like when the zombies fall over and you swipe at them, it may look like you're not hitting them, uh, but you are. You, you, know, you know you're doing it right because eventually they'll go Bleh, and die for good. Um, but, uh, and they eventually, when you kill monsters in this game, they disappear from the area until like later in the game where like new monsters respawn where the old ones were. But that's not till a little later on in the game. And, uh, there's also puzzles in this game. And most are pretty straightforward. Nothing too head scratching or anything like that. Like basically move this to this or flip some switches and stuff like that. There was only one that I had a problem with. But that was because I suck at those type of puzzles where you got to like move something uh, to, to make a, a certain picture. But of course, you move one thing and moves the other. That's the only thing I really got stumped on, but everything else, it was pretty easy and pretty straightforward. There is a limited save system in this game as there are candles in the, uh, the mansion and the game will tell you how many candles you have. And if you have three candles, you only can save three times in that spot and so on and so forth. The max I saw was about three candles. There is enough candles around that you should be able to manage your saves with little to no problem. Unless you're like a crazy person to save every five seconds. I usually only do that for RPGs. But uh, for this, uh, you're pretty uh, handled pretty fine. Especially when you start opening the other areas and such. The, you get new candles. There are boss battles in the game. Like three to be exact. But uh, only one is really memorable. Which is the first one you see in, in its design. Which is 
pretty cool what it is. Second one is just dumb, I think. And then the third one is a complete joke because you can actually find a special gun very easily in this game, which is like another puzzle. And uh, you kill that boss like in three freaking hits. Like, I killed the boss so fast that I wanted to see the actual full boss fight on YouTube. I checked some other uh, videos and there were attacks that I didn't see myself because how quickly I killed the boss. So the bosses are not that enticing except that very first one you run into uh the game looks decent i guess i can say it's not the worst looking game it's nowhere near the best looking game that's for fucking sure <laughs> but it's decent it, it, it's not gonna blow your mind uh some of the monster designs are okay Many of that first boss I talked about, but besides that, everything else is pretty just generic, like, you know, generic zombie and, and such. The match itself looks pretty good, and a lot of the areas are varied, so you're not looking at the same areas over and over again. And even though as you open it up, everything interconnects one, one another, it looks different. So you'll see just a general entrance, and there's this little pool house area. There's uh, a basement uh that that has some creepy areas you bust up in a wall and you find a whole basically look like a prison and a bunch of jail cells uh a place with a bunch of dead bodies the one some bodies like they all got burned alive like there's some creepy looking area uh, area so the 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 atmosphere is actually you know pretty decent as well to go along with the visuals themselves there are some technical problems like i ran into some issues where i would open the door and the other area wouldn't load yet which would give a monster a free hit on me almost killing me which was fucking annoying and there's even certain spots where i would open the door and it would happen again but instead of something hitting me the game would just be frozen in a black screen and you'll just be staring at it this happened only like twice to me while playing the whole three things, so it wasn't too commonplace, but it still was a pain in the ass, and I got pissed off when it happened, since especially with the limited save spots, so now you're kind of afraid uh, not to save because something like this might happen. There's really no voice acting in this game. Everything's reading, so there's that. There's, I don't really count that as a negative or positive. I don't mind it not being voiced, but that's something to you, then... You know, it is what it is. Playing through this game, I can't say I had an awful experience. It was just, like, <laughs> like the graphics, it was just decent. It's something that, if you're interested in about what you're looking at right now, and you want something that's kind of like the old school Resident Evil games, as long as you're paying five bucks or less, go for it. You have some type of interest in, to, in what you're saying and what I've said myself. Uh, don't pay more than that, because it... Definitely is not worth it. Uh, the game is only like two hours long and some of that time could have been spent because of the annoying ass problems I mentioned like the shooting, hit detection, and the, the glitching spots. There's also zero replayability unless you want to get a platinum because you do need to beat the game at least twice in order to do that. But after you beat this, again, two hour game, there's nothing much else to it. So I hope you didn't mind my ramble and for gamer's sake, keep gaming.